The seven people in the band are quite strong individuals. But um, most of us knew each other since we were kids, so we kind of grew up together. You know, a lot of us listening to the same kind of music and, um, you know, when you hang about with your mates, you get influenced by lots of things, don't you? The clothes that we were wearing, I think we all sort of influenced each other a bit like that. We were into sort of retro things, what they were at the time. I mean, you know, there's an idea that uh, rock music was all getting a bit pompous and uh, a lot of old people were making rock music. We were young, you know, that was a sort of big thing. And we kind of felt like we had our own little thing going on with a group of mates that we were hanging around with at the time. So, you know, things like ska and reggae, which seemed to have gone out of fashion, or Prince Buster, I suppose, and Bob Marley and people like that. And then there was Ian Jury, you know, he had a band called Kilburn and the High Roads, which um, a lot of the band went to see. And the lineup was very similar to ours, and uh, the kind of subjects he was writing songs about were what sort of influenced a lot of us in our songwriting. I mean, I think politics and all that came a bit later on. I mean, I was pretty naive. I mean, I was only about, well, 16 or 17 when I, when I started uh, with the band. What do you mean you started to play? <laughs> when I started with the band. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sort of the most important moment on that front was maybe going on the two-tone tour, you know, meeting the specials and all that, you know, and, and, and that was sort of what influenced us quite a lot as well. We were offered to play in Finsbury Park, a um, Madstock gig we did, and we didn't really know what to expect because the, the band had sort of peaked sort of come up like that and it sort of went down like that and um, and then we were offered this gig so we, we sort of weren't sure what was going to happen and, and when we turned up in Finsbury Park there was um, like 70,000 people came over two days and uh, it was just incredible the the love and uh, the sort of joy at everything you know that was in 99 I think and everybody was dancing so much that um, it actually caused the, the whole of Finsbury Park to sort of vibrate. And um, the police were called down in, uh, there was a bit down the hill, there was these flat blocks. Um, and they were actually shaking, you know, and somebody called the police and uh, they, were, they were considering evacuating. And somebody said, maybe it's got something to do with that band playing in Finsbury Park. And the, and the police said, no, you know, well, you, whose leg are you trying to pull, you know? And so anyway, it sort of subsided after a little while. They didn't have to evacuate. And then um, the next day it happened again and they got called out again. There was another bloody earthquake. So the police were forced to admit maybe it did have something to do with that band playing on the other side of the hill. We're very fortunate we bumped into the specials. They played in a pub that we used to hang around in called Hope and Anchor. And they were very similar to us in their attitude and the music they were playing. And, and Jerry Dammers said he was going to start his own record label. And we sort of barely got going, really. And then, but we had made a, a couple of recordings. And then he rang up and said, do you want to make a record? And it was, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a miracle, you know. And that record was a hit and we were sort of away almost immediately. Not having said that we hadn't paid some of our dues, but, um, yeah, things happen pretty fast and, uh, you know, and, and then your attitude changes as it goes along. You know, you kind of think, oh, it's great, isn't it? We made a record. Wow, you know, no one can take that away. And then you think, well, it would be great to make another one. And it just kind of, hello, all right. Then it just, uh, very fortunately, carried on in a very successful way for us. When we started the band, we weren't really thinking about where we were from particularly. You know, I mean, Britain's been a great source of popular music, you know, all the big cities. The fact that we were from London and we were living in London, I suppose influences what you're writing about. And uh, there's some obvious things like the Kinks and Ian Jury, you know, both from London. And sort of coincidentally, they were kind of writing about ordinary everyday life. You know, I think that was something that we all liked. I don't think we ever really thought geographically that, you know, we were any different than anybody else, really. I mean, I'd barely been out of London <laughs> when we started the band. I suppose we've got better at it, maybe. You know, I like to think we got better at it, but obviously when you're, when you're young, you know, there's something going on that's not going on when you're 58 or something like that. Um, on the last album, we made a particular effort 
to, to get back to more writing together, which was very nice. Because we were getting a bit sort of writing solo sort of thing, you know, each man doing a song on his own. So that was more of a combined effort, which was nice, yeah. But we're very lucky to have um, seven very good writers, I would say. Almost seven, yeah. Some bands you get like Lennon and McCartney, there's only two of them, so what can you expect? You can't expect that great a sort of output, can you? Lennon McCartney, you know, Richard Jagger. They're sort of limited because there's only two of them. <laughs>I think it's getting more difficult, primarily, you know, for, 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 the, for this generation because property prices are so ridiculous, you know. When we were young, you know, you could, get, you could squat. You know, there were empty buildings, there were empty warehouses, there were empty houses, you know. I remember I lived in a squat for six months. Which basically meant, you know, it was a disused building that you could just get electricity on. You could rehearse in the basement for sort of nothing. And, uh, you know, that with the fact that there were millions of pubs, you know, when I say millions, a lot, a lot of pubs where you could play music. I mean, yeah, we, we got our first big break in the Dublin Castle in Camden Town. And it was because there were a lot of Irish pubs, you know, and these Irish pubs had function rooms, you know, for weddings and christenings and all that. And so they were perfect made places to, 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 to play concerts. And uh, I think a lot of those have gone. There's all this stuff about you have to be rich now, don't you, to be like any sort of, you know, an actor or musician, because, you know, your parents have to sort of look after you. I think that's a shame.